Welcome back to EPV TV viewers. Look at this beast. I've got a pre-production Sigma 60 to 600 sport series lens. So this is a true super zoom, right? I mean, this is giving you the versatility, but also the reach. Let's take a closer look at it. Now this Sigma 60 to 600 is kind of an interesting experience because we haven't really had a lot like this in the mirrorless world, this sort of normal to extreme telephoto super zoom range. Tamron does make a 50 to 400, it's a nice lens, but again, we're not quite getting up to that 600 millimeter mark. And before this, it was really the Sigma 50 to 500, which is only available in SLR mount. That was a fun lens, absolutely, but for mirrorless, this is about it. Now the Tamron 50 to 400 is available only in Sony E mount, but you can get this lens in Sony E mount or L mount. Out. And I am using it on the Sony a7R5. The 60 megapixel sensor should give us, you know, a good test for the sharpness of this lens. So from a handling standpoint, I really do like the way this lens is designed, but we got a lot to talk about. So 105 millimeter filter thread there on the collar. I love that this has the little detente clicks when you get to those 90 degree points. I think that's great and very few lenses do that. Also on the collar, we actually have the Arca Swiss dovetail cuts. Again, it seems like a lot of telephoto lenses from other manufacturers, they're not doing this lately and I don't know why this is great. Now this lens is two and a half kilograms. That's a knocked and a quarter, which I mean is heavy in the hand, but not inappropriate for lens this size and reach. We've got customizable buttons, of course. We've got autofocus, manual focus, selector, focus limiter. This does have image stabilization. I do like that. And of course you got your selector switch for that. You can choose what your custom button switch will do as well. And this is a fully weather sealed lens. Of course, it is intended for being out on the pitch, being out in the field, even in the rain, no problem. Now, one thing that I really do like that we also saw in the 150 to 600, you've got this lip just behind the front collar with a taper. And what that lets you do is actually push pull zoom the lens very comfortable if you want to they've calibrated the lens so that it has a smoothness to it, which works, but this will creep on its own. And this is an interesting feature because on the 150 to 600, I really like the addition of this smooth tighten lock button where you could actually customize how tight the zoom ring was. You could stop it from creeping, you could loosen it up if you wanted to push pull, or you could lock it in place. This lens does not have that smooth or tight kind of option. It does have a locking switch to lock the focal length though, and you can lock it at any of the listed focal lengths here on the zoom ring. So I could lock it at 60, at 80, at 120, at 600, or anywhere in between. And that's actually a pretty unique feature. I still do wish though that I had the option to tighten the zoom ring. So this is the first Sigma telephoto to have a linear focusing motor. And as you can see, you're focusing from close to infinity. It is snappy, quick, silent. So this is a nice feature to have in this lens. Now, if you look at something like the 150 to 600, that still has the older stepping motors. When you're at telephoto ranges, I'm still very happy with the focusing speed. But here, if I need to go from close to far, this is definitely gonna be the faster shooting lens. So we have an extreme telephoto range here. Even though we don't have a fast aperture, we can still get shallowed up the field. What's the autofocus bokeh character like? Well, actually it was quite impressive. So first off, uh, specular highlights, you know, wide open. Of course, we're getting round specular highlights. Didn't really see any onion rings or anything, but even stopped down a bit. Although stopping down does get rid of some of that cat's eye effect in the corners, we still get nice round specular highlights. We're not getting anything polygonal looking. So that was quite nice. And actually all seems to then benefit the overall look of the autofocus areas, transitions, are smooth, out of focus backgrounds look buttery. So actually I was very impressed with the out of focus areas on this lens. Now if a 10 times zoom factor on a 60 to 600 isn't versatile enough, this lens also gives you really good close-up capabilities. Quite interesting. You actually get it at 200 millimeters and it's nice that we can lock it there. And it gives you a one to 2.4 life-size reproduction. Even with the hood on as well, I still have the working distance and I don't have to remove it. So that's nice and convenient, but really, you can get quite impressive macros out of a telephoto lens like this. Now we've always been impressed by Sigma's lens coatings to try to reduce the loss of contrast when shooting towards the sun. But I have to be honest on this lens, one of the weaknesses I think is shooting towards the sun. Flare is an issue. You definitely want to keep this hood on, but shooting into the sun, I found actually quite a significant loss of contrast in a lot of situations, quite a lot of ghosting as well. And I think that's just because of the complexity of the actual optical formula in here. So keep that in mind. If you are shooting with bright light sources coming right into the lens, you're going to have to work on managing that as much as possible. Is this lens sharp? Well, let's take a look at the test chart here. First off, shooting at the 60 millimeter wide range at f4.5 in the center. Actually, I was very impressed by the sharpness. You can see it's quite good. Stopping down the lens didn't really make that much of a difference, very slight. Looking at the corners too, it's the same story. They seem quite sharp, even shooting wide open at f4.5, stopping down, 
not much improvement. So overall, the wider range on this lens, very good and very consistent. But what about at 600 millimeters, where I assume most people are going to shoot this lens on a regular basis? Well, looking there, now our widest aperture is f6.3. And here in the centers, it's decent, but it's not that sharp. You really have to stop down even just a little bit here to f8 actually makes a noticeable difference and now the centers are quite nice. Corners same story. I felt like shooting wide open at f6.3 a little bit soft. When you stop down it sharpens up. Now this is fine but it means I would definitely want to shoot this lens with the aperture closed down a little bit at the telephoto range but that's often where I need the most light possible. So the 60 to 600 is certainly an interesting shooting experience. And I mean, it really is about having the versatility of that 10 times zoom range. I could first off see this being really useful for sports or journalism, where you just want to go from, you know, capturing multiple players together in a group shot at 60 millimeters, and then going to 600 when they're actually on the pitch, or just where you want the versatility of not having to change lenses often. Maybe you're in dirty environments, or maybe you just don't want to carry a lot of lenses. This could be a really nice lens for that. And I'm going to mention it again, the 60 to 600 does have that excellent close-up capability capability that really adds the versatility so if that's something you like to do a lot this lens might make a lot of sense but if I was going to shoot more wildlife where I'm really dedicating myself more to the longer telephoto ranges I think I personally go for the Sigma 150 to 600 I mean we love that lens it's very sharp it's lighter it's more affordable than this lens and so I think that would probably be a better choice for that kind of work but if you want the versatility that this offers this is a pretty unique product now, the only thing I'm going to say about this is, as far as the sharpness goes, it's good at the telephoto range when you stop down. And this brings us into the problem with any of these slower telephoto lenses. A lot of the shots that we had to do, whether it was at the zoo or you're going to see in the sample galleries, often I had to have the ISO cranked up quite high to get fast enough shutter speeds to still freeze motion. And that means that even though the lens is sharp stop down, I'm not necessarily going to get the best results because my camera is shooting at higher ISOs. If you've got really bright light conditions or you're shooting still life or you can stabilize the camera on a tripod for that kind of stuff great but otherwise handheld action sports and wildlife you are generally going to be struggling with higher isos in your shots again something that goes hand in hand with any of the slower telephotos if that's a problem you definitely want to look elsewhere with a lens that has a faster brighter aperture now as always we appreciate you guys joining us leave comments below like and subscribe to the channel instagram and twitter down there below check out our sample galleries and deepreview.com those links in the description below thanks so much for joining us See you soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.